Ladies and gents, this is one of the funnier games I've seen in a very long time. So here's the deal. We have this crazy player, Fosfru, who has done the Wagon Rush. He's done the Sicilian Tower Drop. He then does the Siege Tower stuff and made videos on all this. And he's starting to get a reputation. People know that the things you're seeing on screen are going to happen. And they don't like it, right? And I think some people are now trying to think, how can I stop it? And how can I put him in his place? Well, here's an attempt at it. So we have Phosphor in the red playing as the Malians. Now, one of the little clips and examples there you saw was the uh, Siege Tower Gebetto play. Really created play and really wild how he's utilizing the Siege Tower to help against Arrow Fire, which was kind of the key focus of that game. Uh, Phosphor around 2K rank, uh, top couple hundred in the world just because of these crazy strategies he's come up with. He's a mastermind, right? We've got Tatangu here in the blue, who is playing as the Persians. Now, Persians were recently buffed. Persian TCs work a bit faster. Persian Eco is one of the best economies in the game. They have great knights. Um, they have fun bonuses to work with. And that, that would be fun bonuses for normal games. But blue here is like, listen, buddy. Uh, I uh, have a strat too. And it is also really annoying to play against. And it is also a strategy that is hard to stop. And it is actually a strategy which is older than all these Phosphor strategies. It is a strategy as old as dirt, uh, as my mom used to say. But uh, it's called the Persian Douche, right? AKA the TC drop, right? And, uh, you know, the reason it's called the Persian Douche is because anyone who has TC dropped you with Persians, you may describe as a bit of a douche. Um, it's just not fun, right? It's not fun, but it is strategic and it is funny. And so, uh, spoilers, that is why Blue chose Persians here, so. <laughs> now, a little bit of context to, to this. I think you will appreciate this context. So, there is a site called, we just call the Dashboard. Um, AOE2Rex.com slash Dashboard. It's really helpful for a lot of different reasons. Like, if you go to the Tournament tab, you can download recent tournament recorded games. You can look at results, all this stuff. So, but, um... The main use of it, and the biggest use of it, is it shows activity, current activity of 2K plus players, okay? Now, when Phosphor was like 17 or 1800, I'd never see him on there, right? And I'd have to go to his profiles to see what he's up to. But now that he's 2K plus, I can just go there, and the site shows, are they in queue for a game right now? If they're in a game, what age are they in? What civ do they have, right? So now I'm like looking at that all the time, and Phosphor's on the list. Right, and it's a rather short list compared to the thousands of players because there's only so many players at that rank. So what that means is, and it's like kind of good, kind of bad in some ways, is this player here is also 2K+. plus. So when he gets a game, he can look and it'll say, got a game against Red Phosphoru. So before he loads in, he was probably like, oh God, this guy again. And got to think... What am I going to do against him? And I point that out because uh, for a normal game, for the average player, because that site doesn't track them, uh, you you get you find out what your opponent is going to do, like what civ they have, who they are, when you get into the game. But here, Blue actually had data, like or, or, or information to know it's Phosphor, and I'm I'm sure played Phosphor before. Now watch, watch this. This is so funny. So the strategy here is all around deleting this TC and building a very strong Persian town center again on somebody. Now, it's kind of important to know where the opponent is. So Blue has enough wood for the TC, has the Vils prepared and everything, but never scouted the opponent. <laughs> now, little advice for you, Blue. You're, you're like, you pushed in deer to get food, but like, you're not going to have a TC anyways, right? So, uh, I mean, those sheep are going to have to go somewhere. It's going to be really awkward for you. Anyways... Blue just can't find the enemy, which is not a good start. It's not. It's embarrassing. I mean, this is just, oh, go in the complete opposite direction. And it's sad because I'm sure Blue knows, like, oh, God. I think it's more so hoping the opponent's over here. But when you see the pond, when you see the hills, you're realizing, oh, no. Probably the other way. And what you could actually break down and look at. So this is main gold. And then there's two four tile golds there and there. So that would be Blue's gold. Awful map, by the way, for gold, honestly. And here is gold. So you could kind of put two and two together and realize, oh, Phosphor is probably over there. 
So this does massively delay the TC drop. However, this whole time, Blue has been making more vills. So there's going to be more villagers here. And Blue now had the wood for a mill, so drop the mill. So now the pigs can be taken and the, and the deer can be taken. And now here comes Blue and finally finds Phosphor. And now this is where it gets crazy. TC at home is going to be deleted. And now we have the clash of Persian douche. Phosphor is sitting here like, okay. And Phosphor is going to leave the berries. And honestly, knowing how many games Phosphor plays and how many crazy strats people are doing against him to try and disrupt him right now, I'm fairly certain this isn't the first time he's faced up against this. But like I always suggest against the TC drop, you can't fight it. You cannot plan on engaging. You have to just plan for your TC to go down. Now, here is why this strategy is brilliant against Phosphoru. Because Phosphoru goes fast castle. And already, we are seeing Phosphoru's TC go down quite quickly. And Phosphoru is halfway to feudal. Phosphoru normally relies on the berries. Phosphoru normally relies on the fact that the TC is a safe place. The TC is no longer a safe place because the TC is not going to be here any longer. This may actually be one of the better strategies to try against a player who's going to go fast castle. So, I have some people will look at this as a bit of a troll strat, but it is actually, I think, a good strategy to throw a player who does the same thing every time for a bit of a whirl. So, really fun stuff. Now, Blue lost the scout, which is sad and can't scout this back area. But we'll see this TC is not being repaired. So the big thing with the TC drop is that the second you take their TC out, you need to rush them with villagers and stop them from building that next TC. The Phosphor would then have to be very choosy on where the TC goes. Now, notice how Phosphor is changing the entire strategy. Phosphor would is on stone and it is designed around having enough stone to build a castle in the castle age but now the berries were denied the tc is down and phosphor is about to get villager rushed and needs to get the walls down this game gets crazy here now i like the way phosphor is walled up it's also kind of funny there's a pig in there shout out to the pig and blue's like all right i'm gonna build a barracks right next to your barracks blue a big tetris fan apparently just squeezing that barracks into the right position. And now Blue is going to just start walling up. Now, I'm sure when Blue sees the archer range, Blue's like, well, that's not good, right? There's going to be archers out. But it's important to, to mention, in order to get archers, Phosphor had to spend wood on the range and the barracks too. So now there's no TC. And behind this, uh, there's the TC now, actually. Blue is stealing the berries. Blue is untouched at home. Still has food here. And like has more villagers than the opponent and has enough food to actually go feudal age here so this is a really good tc drop it's not bad at all because phosphor is going to struggle in some ways to really do damage now that pig is trying to escape and phosphor is not happy about it and phosphor is like come to me pig come back home please be my meat please and is going to eat the pig uh is microing the archers blue is now going to drop a house in that opening and these villagers are trying to drop off the food at the mill. But they can't get out now. And that actually is bad for Blue. It would have been hilarious if Phosphor's villagers went to go drop off the food at the mill. And Blue is trying to go for a full wall off here of Phosphor. Like, <laughs> again, I'm, I am like 99% certain that Blue just said, uh-uh, not again. I'm not giving you an easy fast castle. Siege Tower could better rush against me, you freaking guy. So, I mean, hasn't completely walled in Phosphor, but certainly knows that Phosphor has most of the eco in here. Now, what Blue does not know is that Phosphor has a new TC, and Phosphor is producing vills now. Also, we have farms over here. We have some gold mining happening, so there is some eco. And Phosphor actually sold 500 stone, this is a couple minutes ago, for the gold. So, actually, uh, is invested into the eco and just kind of gave up on the castle plant. Blue's in Feudal Age now, if you didn't pick up on that. And Blue is going to drop an archery range, probably for Skirms. Now, it does get awkward, because if there's ever any archers over here, you don't have any protection. Um, and then these villagers are about to finish the berries that you're stealing. And then these villagers need a task. But it seems like the task is going to be wood, which is fine. And 
overall, I'm like pretty impressed with how Phosphorus dealt with this. He just kind of let the TC happen and, and hasn't overreacted. But also, res collected and vil count and everything. It's not too bad for Blue, who now lives at Phosphorus base. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's going to get some walls down, and Phosphoru is going to run right by because there's no villagers around the TC, and Blue now goes for a house wall. Now there's villagers here, and now we need another house wall, and the archers are through, and the TC auto-attacked the mill. Oh, that would frustrate me. That is really weird. That must be a bug. Uh, normally, it's going to auto-attack units, but I guess you're not... Actually, maybe that's normal behavior. All right, my instinct was to get mad at the game, but maybe Blue... Should hate the play, hate the mill, not the game. I don't know. Um, so anyways, Blue's going to trap these archers now and has a skirmisher here to try and kill the archers. So we'll eventually kill that. Well played from Blue, only lost one villager. And now Phosphor is on the way to Castle Age. Now, this is like kind of what cracked me up, right? Because we got a game where Phosphor wasn't... Like, he adapted out of his strat, right? But... You can't, you just can't, I can't get over the fact, sorry, I'm a little too excited right now, had a little too much coffee, but that Phosphor is like, all right, archers didn't work, and we're right back where we wanted to be. We were on the way to Castle Age, we've got a couple villagers on stone, I know his TC is here, and I am going to stick to my original plan. Now, again, props to Blue here, because Blue is soon going to be on the way to Castle Age as well. Um, somehow, after TC dropping, has the worker lead, somehow, after TC dropping, and clicks up. So the Castle Age times are going to be pretty competitive, and Phosphor has no army right now. None. Phosphor is scout, scouted a little bit, but is just sitting over here. Knows the opponent has a gold there. But, you know, Phosphor has to be careful, because it could be pushed off of gold in this area, and these villagers could all be trapped, and who knows? Like, you do not know what's going to come from this. Could be knights, could be scouts. But yeah, planning on the castle, which Phosphorus wanted to do in the first place. So, Blue's plan was to stop Phosphorus. Blue's plan merely delayed Phosphorus. Now, there's a stable. Yeah, and Blue could see all this, and Blue's like, oh man, this could be so good. Like, right now, guys, Blue is kind of walling in red, and could delete this house, because that's his house, and send a knight in here, and if all these villas are trapped, they all die. This could be brilliant. And Phosphoru walks forward, and Blue's kind of like, huh? And Phosphoru's kind of like, what? And they're like, hi. And then, boom, Castle's going to go up. Blue knows that. And now, blue it's Blue's turn to decide on what to do when the opponent is building a building that normally is reserved for the own player's base. Actually, I don't know what I'm talking about because this is actually Phosphorus base. So Phosphorus is placing this castle in the proper spot. And it was Blue that decided to come here. <laughs> well, Blue's going to be in Castle Age, so you can make new town centers now So uh, without deleting this one. So maybe Blue should make one at home. And these villagers need to make a run for it. But if you make a run for it, Phosphorus could see you. And Phosphorus is just going to walk right underneath this TC with a villager randomly. Both players lose a villager, and Phosphor is going to make a beto. So here we go. Now, Phosphor cannot escape right now. These villagers are all trapped. So I would say if Blue's going to be able to make anything, getting a unit in here would be really strong. I think Phosphor has realized that. But Gebeto, mobile, high attack, very strong. Blue, seemingly very trapped right now. Resources collected is dead even. Monks can convert the Gebeto because they outrange. Yeah, this is a big deal that Phosphor is able to just come over here and take this gold. So at home, Blue will drop the TC, maybe just to protect this area. And Blue's going to catch up on eco upgrades that weren't in before. So we're going to see Bidax here. Thankfully, being Persians, this TC is not going to go down for a long time. Now look at Blue running around the map, maybe looking for other resources right now. Meanwhile, here's Phosphor, Phosphor's scout, looking for Blue's base. This is why Blue built the TC, and this is good high-level stuff from from both, right? Great scouting from Phosphor, but great job from Blue to prep the TC and sense that this area is not going to be the target right now. And so it's five Gebeto, and that's it for Phosphor. And he is creating some villagers here. 
So, be and it makes sense because this attack was delayed compared to a normal game. So, at this point, you can actually afford to make some Gabetto and some Villagers every now and then. Monks are going to be here from blue. Who, again, I think missed an opportunity. A knight running through here could have killed 10 or so Vils. You can tell blue can see those Gabetto and doesn't want to waste the conversions on Vils, though. Because then the Gabetto will instantly come over and cause problems. Where are these Vils? Where are you guys going? What is that? There's one over here, too. Okay, villagers are just wandering all around. And who knows where they'll go. And it's a pretty chaotic game. We can't be too judgmental. <laughs> I, I just, I think it's so funny. Great scouting from Blue has to be said. And Blue's just going to mine some stone there. So Blue now has enough stone for a castle. Big moment in this game. 38 villagers against 36. And the castle's now going up. That castle would deny this gold. And Phosphorus sees that. And Phosphorus pops in the siege tower. And this is what Phosphorus wanted in the first place. He's going to roll on in here. And he's just going to hop in and out, in and out of the siege tower. Now, when they hop out, they're going to kill everything in sight. The monks need to go for conversions. But the second these Gabetto go right back inside the tower, the conversion resets. And then Blue is to click again. And it's just nonstop. And it's back into the tower. And it's super annoying. And this castle is being denied. And Phosphor has a nice little villager lead now. And Blue is probably like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Which is probably what Blue said when Blue saw it was Phosphor on the other side, on the site we mentioned. And it's probably what Blue will continue to say every time he faces Phosphor until Phosphor stops doing this freaking strat. Castle for Blue, going to go up though. And in the meantime, Phosphor is actually repositioned away from the gold. Is going to the wood. The siege tower is trying to escape. And the Gabetto... Like, they don't care. The Gabetto just don't care. The Siege Tower doesn't care. It's so crazy, the Siege Tower. Again, Phosphorus said to me, I said this in when I when I showed this strategy, he said he thinks the Siege Tower is broken. He thinks it's overpowered. Meanwhile, no other high-level players are going for the Siege Tower with consistency. Now, this is obviously a bit of a one-trick strat, right? You know, that, that seems to suit the Gabetto and the Malians, and he does a really good job with it. I do feel in standard games, the Siege Towers are underutilized. And maybe not like, not for the hit and run strategies like this, because this is incredible. Like this is so good. But um, just to tank Aero Fire, they seem to be incredibly strong. I mean, that Siege Tower was underneath TCs and castles for a very long time there. And like this whole time we have Rams now on the way. We're gonna have a second Siege Tower now prepped. And unfortunately for Blue, Blue can't really afford too much. Blue doesn't have any other buildings, so Blue makes a war elephant. Now, this is some chonk right here. 450 HP. Just waddling around. So we've seen a TC drop. We've seen Siege Tower. We've seen Castles. We're going to see Gabetto. And yeah, here comes Phosphor. That gate's in the way. Hops out. Hits the gate. Okay, here we go. Probably didn't expect the elephant. Hops out. See how the Siege Tower is tank getting hit. Now the castle is the one, the castle has to task the, um, the Gabetto, but it's kind of hard to hit the Gabetto because of the siege tower. The elephant's inside, the villagers are out, really hard to cast, in and out of the siege tower time, again and again and again and again from Phosphorus. The rams are going for the castle, the siege tower's insane, this is just unbelievable, and we've got another siege tower coming in as a backup, as we have more rams now, <laughs> and this is just continuous, and Blue has to hope this elephant or something can deal with these rams. But anytime the elephant comes out, the, the, the Gabetto are going to come out. <laughs> and Blue... <laughs> Blue, how long can you do this, dude? Okay, well, actually, the Gabetto need a new tower now. Thankfully, the backup is here. <laughs> the elephant is so weak. <laughs> oh, man. If only he had two elephants and he could do that. That's funny. That elephant's been so weak. So, I mean, in some ways, Phosphor getting a taste of his own medicine. But the castle's still going to go down. Which now means the elephants can't hop into anything. And the monk goes down. The elephants, they will take a lot of hits here. But they're still exposed. And, oh my god. <laughs> Back into the tower he goes. This is funny, man. This is funny. Phosphorus got 43 villagers. And it is just 29 now for blue. 
And so your only real hope if you're blue, who's no stranger to villagers being in different locations, is um, you know, just to just to boom it out, right? Just to come back economically. So some defense at home because this pressure could all come to your base would be nice. Uh, second and third town center would be great. So we've got like the castle here. This makes sense. TC here. This makes sense. Like that. That's your way back into the game. And we can see, we know that Phosphorus' position is obviously very strong. But remember, his reputation is having a very low economy. So if you have 31 villagers right now, if you're blue, and especially if you've got villagers kind of spread out, you can drop a castle, your Persians. Blue still may be like, well, I think maybe we've got this, right? Maybe I've got a chance. But, you know, meanwhile, everything that Blue brought over here... Oh, we have an elephant raid! Elephant raid on the wood line! Sick! Actually, this could be huge. Like, that is what? 10 bills? 8 bills? That could even out the bill count very quickly. Um, but, yeah, anyways, as the elephant is destroying Phosphorus' wood line, Phosphorus has scouted this with the siege tower and with the rams and is bringing forward everything. And it just... It just doesn't feel like a normal game. It is, it's just not normal. This is just something else. This is something different. This isn't common. It, it's not Age of Empires 2. It, I, I don't know what to call it because I don't really play many other games. Elephant update. Elephant still getting lots of kills, which is fantastic. Bill counts closer now. If this castle stays up... This could be really good for blue. Yet again, we have a backup siege tower waiting just in case these Gabetto pop out or are, you know, exposed because the tower goes down. Um, the little scout fight here too. Yep, okay. We got the transfer into the next tower. Makes sense. Other tower goes down. Villagers need to take out the rams. That is a lot of rams. That is 11 rams. And just constant whoop back into the tower here for Phosphoru. Castle is going to go down very quickly. If the castle goes down, the TC is going to go down too. And Phosphoru is, I, I mean, he's just so fun to watch, man. <laughs> he's just so fun to watch. <laughs> but horrible to play. <laughs> just horrible. Like, <laughs> But I, what I love is how adaptable he was in this game. I love how Blue called the GG. I think a lot of people out there. When they die to a frustrating strategy, they they don't drop the GG. I respect the blue for doing it. Um, and and yeah, it was just kind of funny this one, right? Like, I respect blue so freaking much because blue said, "I'm not gonna give you the type of game you want." And honestly, I think with a few things going differently, I think that blue could have won this one. I think these villagers being in here, being walled in, but not ever being killed until this moment, I think that was a missed opportunity. Phosphoru was able to just collect resources. I think one night from that stable in there could have made life more difficult for Phosphoru. Um, had Blue known where Phosphoru's base was uh, and TC dropped earlier, that also could have been really helpful instead of wandering around half the map and realizing the opponent wasn't there. I don't know. But, you know, you can't say uh, that this player can't adapt because now that was a pretty clear example of adapting. And uh, yeah, just a funny game here. I love that type of thing. I love player reputations. When a player is known for something and then the other player knows what they're up to and tries to counter it in some way, it's always fun stuff for me. So um, let me know what you thought about that one in the comments, please. And uh, well, apologies if people are doing the Phosphoru to you over the next few weeks. Uh, it looks fun to be doing it, uh, but I have tried this stuff myself and I will say... It definitely takes some patience to get used to it. And I definitely think that Phosphorus makes it look easy because it's one thing to watch it. It, it, the, it. You just do not feel comfortable, or at least I don't feel comfortable when I try stuff like that. And for whatever reason, it feels like if I follow the steps, it's just still not working for me. Maybe I'm not bold enough. Maybe I don't commit to it enough. Or maybe I should just leave it to the professionals. Um, good game, everybody. As always, games every day. We've got more stuff coming, including Hidden Cup 5, which will be February 25th through March 3rd, streamed live on YouTube and live on Twitch. And you've heard this every day over the past week or two. You will continue to hear that until the main event happens. The best players in the main event <clears throat> will be playing under hero names. We've got our list of heroes um, on screen, and, and well, the, some of them anyways. And you can maybe root for your favorite hero or try and find your favorite player. Should be some good stuff. Uh, but thanks again, everybody, for watching. See you around.